So on the anniversary of Russia invading Ukraine, I talked about how defeating Russia and Ukraine is important to signal to China that invading a smaller nation such as Russia did to Ukraine would be futile. And it signals to them, don't try invading, invading Taiwan. But I want to make it very clear, not confuse people. A Russian defeat in Ukraine does not automatically say China won't try something with Taiwan. Xi Jinping himself has said he wants Taiwan in the Chinese fold by 2027, whether it's through diplomatic uh, avenues or through force. He would rather not use force. And, and the reason is, is even his own administration, I've seen come out of Beijing, talk about the virtual impossibility of invading Taiwan. And he's largely right. It doesn't mean that he won't try because, as we've seen with Putin, despotic authoritarian regimes with goals and promises to people to have great glory for their country through conquest tend to view that conquest as an end-all for their administration. And that's what concerns me with Xi Jinping. Fortunately, China is more integrated and requires inputs from external f forces such as the United States. And by forces, I mean external uh, inputs in manufacturing, etc. Not so much military forces, but from external organizations to function. They don't have enough energy internally to continue to uh, operate as a country at war like Russia does. So the reality is they have recently become more realistic in what they are seeing as a potential invasion of Taiwan as to be very dangerous for China. And this comes as we've just seen today, India is potentially moving closer to Western goals as they've inked deals on visas with the United States to allow more Indian uh, Indians to come to school and work in the United States, which was a, something that the country of India very much wanted, as well as there's a potential deal in the works where we start f selling them advanced fighter jets, something that Russia and China cannot do for India, nor would China or China even do that. They're somewhat adversarial, which is interesting that people bring up BRICS and, and tend to forget that India and China don't like each other very much. Anyways, moving on to why... Xi Jinping and his government has said it would be very difficult to take Taiwan. I made a video, I don't know, a year ago, I think, and it was a series of videos that talked about this, but it was, I couldn't find it. And going back a year when you make this many videos as I did is just a huge pain in the ass. So I'm going to rediscuss this somewhat. And it's going to be somewhat abbreviated because I think that was like a four video series and I went super in depth. And a lot of people don't really want that because, to be honest, this is TikTok, not like the History Channel or whatever. So the reason I think China has pause on using force against Taiwan is, yes, they've seen what has taken place with, with Russia and Ukraine. The reality for China is that if they were to try to conduct an amphibious landing on in Taiwan, because Taiwan's an island, it would be extraordinarily difficult because amphibious landings are tactically one of the hardest things you can do in warfare. I mean, all we have to look at is amphibious landings from history and see just the, the massive carnage that was caused on the countries that were landing on, on a foreign territory or a foes held territory. And the reality is, is when we look at Russia and Ukraine, we see Ukraine had eight years of preparation for Russia. The Taiwanese have had 70 years to prepare for China. 70 years. And they're on an island. And the Chinese have to cross a strait that really only lends itself to calm waters a couple times a year. And this is cyclical. So it happens in cycles. Usually it's in early spring and late fall when you see a lot of uh, the waters that you can cross those countries become calm enough to launch a massive amphibious uh, incursion into another country. That doesn't say that large tankers don't go all the time. That's a, that's a different beast, though. So the first thing that comes up when you look at a potential Chinese invasion into Taiwan is what we all see. And what we saw with Russia is we would see the buildup. The whole world would see the buildup. China would have to build up its capacity near the port that would be launching the amphibious invasion. Taiwan would see this coming by a mile, so would the United States. And I'm going to, side note here, I'm going to focus on why this won't be successful for China, even 
if the U.S. and the rest of the world don't get involved. It's just Taiwan, China. So when it comes to the buildup, Taiwan would see that. And they would use their extensive spy network. And don't don't think China doesn't have one as well. Both sides would start using their extensive spy networks to figure out what's going on. And the reality for China is, is they would have to, before launching the attack into Taiwan, they would have to soften Taiwan up. The minute those missiles started flying, the first thing Taiwan is going to hit is that staging area in China preparing to come over to Taiwan. They would hit all of the ports, all of the ships setting up. And when I say ships, I don't mean like big amphibious carriers like the U.S. has where they carry a lot of troops, troop carriers across for large amphibious landings. China doesn't have enough of those to land a force of size that would be required to take Taiwan, especially if they're trying to take armor assets, which would be needed. The, the reality for China is, is they might be able to carry with their military assets between 15 and 45,000 troops. That's not even close to enough to be needed to take Taiwan. That's If they use wave tactics, they potentially could build up over time. But let me tell you why Taiwan just won't let that happen. First and foremost, the minute the missiles from China fly, Taiwan immediately responds by hitting that port system. Second of all, because China doesn't have enough military amphibious troop transport capacity, they would require merchant marine, not merchant marines, their maritime militia, the Chinese maritime militia. This is just boats, standard like fishing boats that they put machine guns on. They're not armored. They have no other capability other than machine gun boats. They're, they're basically like wooden Coast Guard boats, essentially. And what would end up happening is Taiwan, who actually has a navy with submarines, and granted China does too, but those submarines would operate within the Taiwanese Strait and start immediately just smoking any boat that came across. Taiwan has coastal artillery. That coastal artillery would rain hell on on the, the Taiwan Strait. Now, many people would say, well, China would soften Taiwan up with all of these ballistic missiles. Well, Taiwan recognizes this. And if you've ever seen the geography of Taiwan, you, reckon, you realize it's mountainous. Many of Taiwan's air assets sit on the other side of the mountain. So it's hard to fire a ballistic missile from that close of range from China and try to lob it over a mountain and then turn it around and hit the target. It just doesn't happen. And China does not have the capability to launch a missile around the bottom of the globe going that long of a distance. Also, Taiwan has strong air defenses. But nevertheless, Taiwan also builds their airfields into the mountains. So they're in large airfield bunkers. So you are essentially striking a hornet's nest at this point. So not only is Taiwan's defenses integrated into the geography in a way that protects it from massive missile barrages because they've had 70 years to prepare for this. They've had 70 years to plan tactics, 70 years to create uh, sea wire plans and build oil trenches that light on fire when you hit the beach and uh, have the tactics for naval engagements in the Taiwan Strait as well as coastal artillery. Oh, and that's before you even get up the beach where you were going to fight an advanced Western trained military with Western equipment and tactics on their home territory who are extraordinarily motivated. I think that in the first invasion, and if this is how many troops China commits, I think in 48 hours we would see a million troops die. It would be the largest singular battlefield casualty rate in the history of the world. Taiwan is a hornet's nest surrounded by porcupine quills. And China knows this. Even if they get up the beach, land something that is viable for urban warfare, I'm um, talking armored vehicles, etc., they're still contending with a Taiwan that has all of their equipment that has been bunkerized. They're contending with a Taiwan that has advanced fighter aircraft, likely with pilots that are better trained than the Chinese. This would be very ugly for China. Now, China has a lot of people, and they can just continue wave after wave after wave. But at some point, when you lose two, three, four, five million, and Taiwan is still standing, I just don't think it works for China. And they've said as much as well.